This video is made possible by the free-to-play action game Crossout. Check out the game through the link in the description below and you can start with three extra weapons or a vehicle cabin just for registering. Also before we get started, obviously there's going to be some Japanese pronunciations in this video. I'm not Japanese. I do not speak Japanese. I'm going to do my best. Let's get into it. Those who have watched anime have seen a lot of weapons inspired by those used in the feudal days of Japan. And anyone who has taken a Japanese martial arts class has gotten to play around with at least a few of the more basic ones, such as the bow staff or the nunchucks. However, the feudal Japanese had a lot of bizarre and interesting weapons, some that you may or may not recognize from your favorite animes. In today's video, we are going to go over 10 of the strangest but still effective weapons from the days of feudal Japan. Number 10. The Kyoketsu Shoge, the ninja's rope and dango weapon. The Kyokatsu Shoge is a weapon from the feudal days of Japan, and it's relatively unique in the pantheon of items that we have used to kill each other over the years. It consists of a large pointed dagger, often hooked or clawed at the end, that is attached to a long chain. The chain is usually attached to a ring or some other kind of handle in order to swing it above your head and throw the sharp weighted dagger at an enemy or even trip up a mounted opponent. While it was popular with ninjas, some legends say that it was first designed in the heat of battle. The stories say that the first version was a combination of a broken spear and a long length of rope which the warrior used to create a makeshift weapon that gave him distance and piercing power. While it gives good reach as a weapon, it was also useful as a tool as the hooked style of the dagger ends usually worked great as a grappling hook as well. As well as grappling walls, it could also be used to grapple enemies if you were trying just to injure or capture them instead of killed them entirely. Number 9. Blow dart pipes disguised in instruments and similar items. Blow dart guns are a weapon that has appeared in many cultures over the years, but they were particularly popular among ninjas and other assassins in feudal Japan. Known as Fokia, they were often disguised in musical instruments or other pipe-like devices that would go unnoticed. An extremely clever assassin could play street music and slowly make his way towards his desired target in order to get a hit on them at close range. The blow dart guns generally used poison-tipped needles with fast-acting poisons meant to quickly dispatch their victim before any antidote could be applied. While this could be a dangerous way to kill, as you generally had to get close enough in a crowd that you might be apprehended for your crime, this was not always a problem. Sometimes the assassin already knew that their life was mostly forfeit and was willing to forego their own safety in order to destroy an important enemy target. Of course, the truly skilled could melt into the crowd and disappear afterwards, but depending on the size of the crowd and how many bodyguards their opponent had, this may not have always been possible. Number 8. The Kenobo, a strange blunt weapon heavily featured in folklore. The Kenobo, which requires the skill of Kenobo Jutsu to use, was a giant club about the size of a normal person's height, and it was thick, often made mostly of wood. However, the unique factor was that the club portion was always covered in iron spikes or blunt iron bits, and the more expensive and better the Kenobo, the more metal it was made of. This made it extremely hard to swing as it was absurdly heavy, which meant that only the most skilled warriors could wield it. It was also a risky weapon, as getting a good swing with it and missing left you open to enemy attack in the worst way possible. However, it also had its advantages, which is why many people went to the effort of learning how to use it regardless. It was simply great against mounted opponents if you could get a good hit against their horse, and with the sheer momentum and all the iron bits, it usually did incredible damage even against a lightly armored horse and horse-mounted opponents. It also features in mythology, where it was used to fight demons called Onai, and sometimes it is wielded by the mythological demons as well, whose great strength allows them to utilize it with terrifying ferocity. Number 7. Many do not realize size were mostly used as blunt weapons and by the police. The size are one of the most well-known weapons from Japanese history, and most people know them well. While you will occasionally see a sai with a single prong and sometimes a tassel to provide for better throwing, the vast majority of sais had two prongs and a main blade and weren't really all that great as throwing weapons. Rather, their greatest use was that they were incredible for catching swords, spears, and other weapons in their crossguard and then disarming their opponents. 
For this reason, many people do not realize that the Psi was rarely that sharp and was mostly used as a blunt weapon. While you would find the occasional Psi with a sharpened tip, this was rare as they weren't great puncturing weapons and were rarely used for such a thing. While they are mostly known for their origin from the Japanese island of Okinawa, they were originally seen all over Southeast Asia and have been popular in the past as a law enforcement tool. The ability to catch the weapons of dangerous people made them good for disarmament without causing too much damage, and this is likely why the blunt Sai became so popular as the main form of weapon. Number 6. Kama Techniques Can Easily Cause You to Hurt Yourself this was a weapon often used by Okinawan farmers to defend themselves from the better armed forces from mainland Japan, but also even earlier by farmers on mainland Japan against the shogunate, and later used in practice by Okinawan farmers after the Japanese authorities suggested learning all techniques they could in case the Chinese invaded. The Kama is a sort of cross between a hatchet and a mini sickle, and it has a short blade that can be used for cutting, slashing, hacking, and chopping. It is almost always dual wielded and relies on a lot of crossed movements. For both defense and attack. Unfortunately, it is relatively easy to injure yourself with them due to the crossed movements and short range, so it is best to start with dulled blades when you're first practicing. The Kama requires great skill to wield both for this reason, for its relatively short range against enemies, and because it doesn't really give you that much in the way of defense unless you are really, really good at what you do. But you know what is a lot of fun and it won't injure you at all? That would be video games like today's sponsor Crossout, and I want to tell you a bit about them before we get into today's top five. In fact, better if I show you, so let's jump over to my computer and I'll show you how it goes. Welcome to Crossout. This is uh, the game. This is what I built. I built this guy from the ground up. So if I just show you, if we just go to build, you can like grab these things and you can move them. I got this uh, train thing, this thing on the front for protection. I got my little machine gun here. I got my BFG on top, and then I got some jetpacks on the back. So you get really limitless cre uh, freedom to create in this game. You can really add a whole lot of stuff to your cars. I'm just playing Invasion. I like Invasion. Uh, you have to protect this big, I don't know, like refinery thing. I don't really feel like my jets give a whole lot of extra power, but the cool thing about this game is I can just add two more onto the back. Okay, so this guy, you really don't want to get shot by him because he will ruin you. Okay, there's also these bad guys. Can I get him? Yep. I think that gun's mounted on the front, so I'm actually doing quite a bit of damage right now. You see, you see, he's, ah! Oh! If you get in his line of fire, he will normally you managed to survive a little bit longer than that. Look at this guy with his jet boosters. I made one like that before, but it was really hard to control. So join us on the battlefield for free. There's a link in the description below. Um, you can get three extra weapons or a vehicle cabin just for registering. It's the best way you can support what we're doing here at Today I Found Out. So I'd really appreciate it. Link below. It's a lot of fun. Just get started today. Number five, the boat or Eku was bizarre, hard to use, and loved by fishermen. Many people who have studied a martial art or two have tried out the bow staff, which is relatively easy to use. It is a long staff, perfectly weighted, and ideally a couple of inches higher than someone's regular height. However, if you get far enough into some Japanese martial arts like karate and master the bow staff, they may introduce you to a similar but more difficult weapon called the Aku. The Aku is basically a modified boat oar and originally was just a straight up oar for someone's boat that they used to paddle like you would with the regular oar. Weapons like the Naginata, which is a staff with a sword blade on the end, became less popular as Okinawans had to hide more advanced weaponry from mainland Japan. Instead, weapons like the Yeku became popular because fishermen could use it with no suspicion at all as long as no one noticed them practicing with it. It is more difficult to use than a bow staff because of the counterweight at the ends, and for this reason, it can be very difficult to master. In later years, the Japanese authorities encouraged fishermen to practice with it when they were worried about Okinawa being in invaded by China, but didn't have a lot of resources to spare for the islanders to defend themselves with in times of crisis. Number 4. They had their own version of Caltrops, Makibishi, to slow their enemies. Today, caltrops, metal spikes laid out to waylay your enemy, are rarely talked about. This is likely because using them on civilian streets would just create a gigantic mess, and most militaries have incredible treads and tires and such, so they aren't really worried about such devices. However, back in the days of feudal Japan, they had their own caltrops, and they were incredibly effective. They were called makibishi, and they had two different versions. The first version was made of iron and was called a tetsubishi. These were entirely artificial constructs. However, they also had a 
natural version, made from the seeds of the water cowtrop plant, a type of thistle. They dried them until they were hard and sharp, and then used them the same way as others. These were called tenon bishi. All of them were used, as you would imagine cowtrops to be used. They were scattered on the ground in order to slow down the advance of enemy foot soldiers or horses. If used properly, one person or a small squad could greatly slow down a much bigger force, do a little bit of damage, and escape before they could be forced into an armed conflict against a force that was too powerful for their current numbers. Number 3. Kusaragama – Not Just a Weapon from Anime and Manga the Kusuragama dates back from the Muromachi period of Japan, which was roughly from the early 1300s until the end of the 1500s. The Kusuragama is a combination of a kama, a chain, and a heavy iron weight. While relatively memeable from anime, it was a very popular weapon during its era, and it was said to have the highest mortality rate of all the weapons of its time. The reason it was so effective was due to how it gave you range and the ability to disarm and then attack your opponents. The Kusuragama user could swing the chain and the weight above their head and then throw the iron ball and chain in order to entangle and control the sword, spear, or other weapon that the opponent was trying to use against them. Then, while either removing their opponent's weapon entirely or simply keeping control of it, they could close the distance and still have their camera to eviscerate the enemy with. The weapon was also versatile, as you could simply strike with the weight from a distance if you didn't want your own weapon entangled, and at close range you could just wrap the chain around your hand and use the camera as a hatchet. Interestingly, this weapon is specifically banned in both Canada and the Republic of Ireland. Number 2. Reverse Blade Sword – Not Just for Roroni Kenshin if you have ever watched or probably even heard of the anime Rory Kenshin, you have probably heard of the reverse blade sword wielded by the famous Batosai. Now, many people do not know that for the longest time this was nothing more than a legend and there was no proof that such a thing was real. However, recently in the Chiba Prefecture of Japan in Chiro City, a sword with dragon carvings was discovered in an old family storage shelter. This excited historians and made them wonder if there may or may not have been more such swords that were once extinct. Now, the sword that was found was only 11 inches, and the blade itself was only 8.6 inches, so it really counts more as a kogatana than a full katana, but it does have the reverse blade aspect, which is unheard of in anything the size of a kogatana. Short tanto dagger blades like the kubakiri have also been designed with a reverse blade and used in Japanese history, but they were extremely rare and usually did not have a point. While it may not be the full length of an actual sakabato, the very existence of a reverse blade kogatana has made many historians wonder if, perhaps, there is more to the story of Rory Kenshin and the Betosai than many of us had thought. Number 1. The feudal Japanese used mini rockets fired from bows. As early as the 6th century, the Japanese are recorded using fire arrows against the Koreans using bows known as yuma, but of course, fire is not something particularly impressive. Many ancient cultures used fire in their weapons, and fire arrows or other similar devices were quite popular. However, by the mid 1500s, around 1543, the Japanese acquired matchlock technology from the Portuguese, and this allowed them to step up their fire arrow game to a much greater level. They designed fire arrows specifically for their matchlock weapons known as bohia. These fire arrows used primitive gunpowder technology, as did the firing device known as a hia jutsu, or fire arrow gun, which allowed much greater distance and impact. The primitive combustion simply gave them a much greater edge and turned the weapon into something more akin to almost a mini rocket than rather a simple fire arrow. The Japanese were so impressed by the capabilities of matchlock technology that before long they started experimenting with primitive guns and used them far more often, widely and effectively than most other cultures did. While guns and fire arrows of the past may not have been the most easy to use weapons, the Japanese self-discipline, as well as their incredibly well-designed military tactics, allowed them to make use of these types of devices back when most countries considered them too unwieldy for use in widespread open warfare. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Also, please do check out our sponsor Crossout. There is a link to them below. And as always, thank you for watching.